We are three minutes late. <laughs> so, do you know what the biggest cause of the delay? <laughs> How many of you missed the due date of delivery? Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> So I know many projects are always delayed, but how many of you really started on time? Is everybody on board? Hey, hey, uh, we have a little work to do with the previous project. I will join later. Hey, hey, I need a little bit follow up with the previous customer. I will miss the event. <laughs> and then usual stuff is that you start Probably one week later, or what's time, one month later. Sometimes, by the time you started the due date, you didn't have enough people. <laughs> so the first thing first, <laughs> Kaizen is start on time <laughs> and finish early and enjoy beer. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll talk about Kaizen stuff here. So I'm Kiro Harada from Japan. So I'm doing an Agile coach for years. <laughs> so this is my colleagues, attractor <laughs> in Japan. So I'd like to bring some of them here again, too. So here's a version history. So I have been doing the presenting this session for many times. I have a gap, gap around here, about two years. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So Kaizen. Do you know the word? OK, many of you. Are you doing it? OK. Are you, are you good at no. <laughs> Oh, that's too bad. If somebody raises a hand, I'll ask him or her to come and present here. <laughs> 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 that's weird. But the question is, is it possible to teach Kaizen? So since you're team, your process, your product are all different. So about teaching, OK, this is how to do the Kaizen thing, probably pointless. <laughs> it doesn't work. So let's see. Can I teach how to ride bicycle? Uh, could you write a detailed specification document to teach kid how to ride bicycle? <laughs> so, yeah, I think many of you, most of you can ride a bicycle here. But can you describe the instruction to enable who cannot ride a bicycle to be able to ride it? So it's hard. <laughs> yeah. So Kaizen is like teaching <laughs> bicycle riding. But is it possible to teach how to teach your kid how to ride a bicycle? So, I cannot teach how to ride a bicycle, but I can teach you how to teach your kid how to ride a bicycle. This is how. <laughs> so I'll share the slide <laughs> later. So uh, try it. So I have been successfully get the kid ride a bicycle in three hours, <laughs> many of them. So, but the quickly, quickly here. So these are bad things. <laughs> Don't use training wheels. If you keep your kids riding with training wheels longer, it's it like <laughs> delayed <laughs> to get the bicycle on. And also fathers, <laughs> especially young energetic father, try to keep the tail of the bicycle for a long time. But it slows down the learning process. <laughs> you have to let your kid do <laughs> whatever you, he see want to do. So this is do's. <laughs> so <laughs> have a good protective gear. So they fail many times. <laughs> it hurts a little. But uh, having a bleed on the knees, <laughs> demotivating them a lot. So get a good protection. And then let them fail and give it a gang. And see uh, here, this is training bicycle. There's no pedal here. So first teach how to balance only, 
and keep going without touching the feet on the, on the, on the ground, then after one hour or so, <laughs> they can ride bicycle. <laughs> so only one thing at a time and be a safe environment <laughs> is the key <laughs> to get your kids start riding bicycle safely. So it is very similar to how to teach Kaizen thing. So why Kaizen is important? So Kaizen is interpreted into continuous improvement. Can you continuous improve? So I'd like to see your case. Is your team doing Kaizen? Doing? So can you do that Kaizen 10 times more? 100 times more? A million times more? I still can you do that? <laughs> so continuous means that way. You can do more. But is your organization? Is a company? Then ask another question. So it is not for yourself, Monto, to pull the team, the company. How about you? Are you doing Kaizen yourself? Are you getting better? So continuous means you have to do it always, every day, every hour, <laughs> every minute, oh, timelessly, endlessly. There's no end of Kaizen, so you can keep doing long, long time. So there's no perfect team, no perfect there. So a little false assumption is here. Many of us can get into. Our performance is not good enough because we have not done enough. We must do more. There was a commercial of the sports brand, Do More. <laughs> it exhausts you. <laughs> so I didn't achieve enough because I have not done enough. I have to do more, do more. So it's a common, common symptom you get into until you get completely exhausted. So, oops. Okay. So, are any of you an athlete? Profession, not professional. Are you learning a marathon or something? Have you ever been a sports coach? The number one cause of the sport athlete problems is overtraining, training too much, until they hurt themselves. So the reason every professional athlete has a coach is that prevents him or her from overtraining. The coach's job is have the athlete slow down. <laughs> so if you don't, I have a life log here. It is measuring <laughs> how much sleep I have. So why not in business? We can do our coaches here in business so that we can do a sustainable pace. That's why we have coaches here in a Scrum Alliance, here. So this is it. This is the loom machine built in 1924, 80, 84 years old now. So this is still operative. If you visit the museum in Nagoya, where Toyota headquarters is, you can see these rooms still operating. <laughs> but uh, what, what is special about this? So later 1920s, uh, Toyota, as a com company, <laughs> sold the patent of this loom to a UK company and then get some money. And then they invested the money for motor vehicles. So that's the beginning of Toyota motor cars. <laughs> so this is a trick of the Toyota innovation. Do you know how, what the new feature of this room? Yeah. 
So whenever it's something goes wrong, it stops. If the thread is broken, it stops. If the horizontal thread is running out, there's new shadow get in. So that it keeps going. As long as it creates good fabric. If the vertical thread is broken, there's a sensor, <laughs> 80 years old one. If the one, even one of the thread is broken, it immediately stops. And then the, you have to get the operator back to fix the thread and then continue with that. And then it keep producing good fabric. The loom before this, especially automatic one, cannot stop. Even though the thread is broken, it keep looming. And then create a tons of fabric that's a defect inside that cannot be sold very well. The key is to stop. <laughs> How many of you are programmers here? OK. <laughs> How many of you continue implementing a new feature knowing there's a bug in the existing code? <laughs> you are less intelligent than this machine. <laughs> <laughs> Fix the problem first. <laughs> so that's the key. It's tough if something is wrong and then it only creates good product. That's the key part. It's not about do more. It's not about accelerate. It's not about making more. It's simple, stop if you find some problem. <laughs> that causes, Toyota has become such a huge company right now. So, and online there. If you had a problem, stop the line. If you had a problem, stop and observe. Then you can find the problem. And then you fix the problem, and then you implement a solution that prevents the same problem again. That's the Kaizen part. <laughs> so your Kaizen is continuous, isn't continuous because you are doing more. <laughs> so because you have a problem, you add checklist to the release list. <laughs> if you have a problem release, you add managers watching everybody. <laughs> You're actually doing more. <laughs> And then if you're doing more, you use less, more resources, you have more time, you, you get delayed. <laughs> it's not really continuous. So improving means you can do the same with less. <laughs> so that commercial film should say, should never say do more. Should say do less. <laughs> uh, less is another name <laughs> for a framework, but uh, do less. <laughs> so are you improving? How about you? Are you improving? Don't worry about it. I was not. I was traveling a lot. So how many other coaches are here? I travel a lot. Have you ever had a health problem with it? So this is I saw <laughs> after I get back to concert. <laughs> Since uh Traveling a lot of places, teaching classes, doing coaching, it was so much fun. <laughs> so I didn't have a coach. So I thought I was doing okay, <laughs> sustainable pace, but I was not. <laughs> so the coaches <laughs> find other coaches watching you. <laughs> How sustainable pace are you working? <laughs> so sometimes coaches are workaholic, be careful. <laughs> So you have to teach younglings about sustainable pace of working without breaking his or her health. <laughs> so that's your job. <laughs> so it's a good book, Healthy Programmer. If you haven't read it, I recommend reading it. So recently, <laughs> I'm keeping track of my sleeping time. I sleep very well, <laughs> long. <laughs> keeping track of the thing. So your personal Kaizen is a kind of prerequisite. So try to improve yourself so that you can contribute to the team. Oh, that uses up more time. I, see I have ten, 10 more minutes. <laughs>
Have you ever heard of this Muri, Mura, and Muda? We all say the eliminating waste is the key of the lean stuff, TPS stuff, but uh, waste is coming from unevenness, and then unevenness coming from you know, overload, overburden. The first thing first, so you have to eliminate overburden to the team. So how can we do that? So let's start for things first. The first thing for the team about Kaizen is creating slack. Time to stop working. If you're working too hard, it's a problem. I mean, how long have you been working without returning home? <laughs> you need slack. So this is a book called The Now Habit. It's about procrastination. But uh, this book recommendation is uh, put into your calendar vacation with the highest priority. So make the loom you're not, not working. That works pretty good. But can you make your team stop working and get together? OK, go see the grass. How others? Sometimes it is very hard. Everybody is busy. But uh, you have to get the whole team together, stop working. So, but there's a really effective trick here. It, it always works. <laughs> so if you have a release date, or if you have a major software release, buy Hagen Dust ice cream for everybody, and then bring it to the team room, and then say, your backlog is melting. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody gets together. <laughs> so then we have a time without working, without not doing a task that, about the team dialogue. So we are not limiting to a real work thing. So your team can talk anything. But uh, if the key team keeps talking, our whole team together, they are talking about more about quality, more about work, and then you can agree on issues. So agreeing on issue is the key. Kaizen is totally, usually start about solutions, but uh, starting with the issues is really important part. So, like, we need to improve the quality of software. We need to do Scrum better. We have to implement CI/CD or blah, blah, blah. But there are solutions, not the issues. So, we have facts, opinion here. But uh, these problems are actually here. So, lack of solution. But lack of solution is not the problem. So if you just agree the solution, you cannot see when to end. <laughs> so you have to agree on a fact observable data problem <laughs> so that we make a decision, like <laughs> Lena discussed data-driven one. Lack of solution is not the problem. <clears throat> so, so after having a team agree on issues, so we have agreed that the issue can be addressed. So we, we do something how to fix it. So then we can do value stream mapping. So we can visualize the whole picture. Uh, we'll share the slide for everybody. So slide picture is not necessary. If necessary, take the picture. <laughs> <laughs> so we create the value streaming so that how kind of work uh, transfer to the custom value. And then, along with the value stream, we create skill metrics. So the number of people names here, the skills the people have. A uh, good trick about skill mapping here is uh, this is a current situation, and uh, this is a target situation six months later. So it's skill metrics about the skill development plan as well. By having, by having so these half, Half moon circle means people are willing to learn new skills. 
So it will be a much better shape in six, years, uh, six months. Then, after having this, we do small experiments. So we do a small, small experiment with a team and then get the result. It's fun. And also, we are doing a visualization. It's a good exam example book about it. Uh, we do one by one. So people are trying to experiment multiple things at the same time, but don't do that. Single variable experiment is the basic. Just change one thing and see what happens. So if you are really familiar, if you really experiment with one variable experiment, you, you can go for set-based design. So it is a church. <laughs> it's a Venn diagram here. And it's a Latin matrix here. It's minimizing the number of experiments to, to do a multiple variable experiment. It is on a church <laughs> stand grass. <laughs> and then other thing is improved flow called ECLS. I go quickly. So eliminate something. So it's the best one. If the process is not adding value, eliminate it. <laughs> so if you eliminate completely, it's really scary. So put there some time box, eliminate some process, see what happens. If nothing happens, probably it is useless. <laughs> so Scrum is a good time box. <laughs> Try this. So if you're getting the rework all the time, just like the requirement review, combine them. <laughs> In include the people who are doing review together, work together, it'd be easier. So pair programming or more programming, a similar kind of this. So if you have uh, all the problem later and then getting back to earlier, earlier processes, rearrange them. So ATDD is a kind of them. So if you have, always have an integration test problem, why don't you write an integration test specification early <laughs> so that we can prepare for it? And then simplify. So buy a bottle of milk, if there's an egg, buy six. <laughs> what do you buy? <laughs> we are not good at conditionals. <laughs> so make the process straightforward is easy one. So that we have analyzing defects, and we find defects early. Do you know that, what is the schematic of this? It is from the car brake. So it's a brake disc here, car part here. There's a metal pin inside. So before this was implemented, there's a lot of car accident after losing the brake part. So this one, it's a brake part getting thinner. This metal key try starts scratching the brake disc. So that created dynamic stable process. It's a controversial time. If you are doing Kaizen, your process is continuously changing. You change the process all the time, little by little. Scrum says the process never need to be identical to uh, three sprints later. <laughs> Two sprints is okay because if you do a one experiment fail battery, you get back to the original process again to make sure it works. But if you have a three sprint, your process may be changed a little bit to make it better. So, and then if you have a good result, repeatable one, you can write down standards. Don't try to write standards before you do anything. People are willing people start, start writing standards before doing experiment. I think the Agile coaches are hearing a request from the customer. Can I create a Scrum implementation standard for this, our company before doing anything? <laughs> so do experiments more and more, and then distill what worked for you. And also we, we can do our mentoring, pair programming. It's a little bit old iMac here. And we do a continuous learning. So we share information. So do you have a 
project retrospectives or project review after this? How is it? We failed because of this blah, 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 because this problem is coming from blah, we should do more and we should communicate better kind of thing. So it won't improve. So it should be more than about showing off the achievement. With this project, we have achieved this. In this project, this worked very good. So that we can learn from it. So showing off, sharing other team with it. So by doing that, it will be a continuous improvement implemented so that your work is easier and safer. So this is uh, activities in the patterns uh, written in a way, starting from uh, creating slack here and then until the continuous improvement. So I'll share the slide there. Try to see how much you actually know. <laughs> about your process. So then, this is all document. This is called TWI, Training Within Industry. This is where Kaizen is from so far. This is not from Toyota. <laughs> this is from United States Wartime Workforce Ministry. <laughs> So it is designed to train housewife to be a factory worker in, during the era of World War II. But the key part is written here on the top, to make your work easier and safer. This is the purpose of Kaizen. So if you're, you have to check yourself, your change make your work easier, change change make your work safer. So TWI has seized 1945 as the World War II ends. Then US incorporated the concept of TWI to Japan and then create a movie. The, the movie title is Four Step for Improvement. And then it was translated in Kaizen Eno Yondankai. That's when Toyota started using the word Kaizen. So it's about continuous learning. <laughs> so then the Toyota and the other people were in interested in uh, creating a product design and we have implemented several ways. And then Nonaka Takeuchi wrote a paper, new new product development game <laughs> that the uh, roots of Scrum and then it was then learned by Jeff and Ken and became Scrum. So we are all learning vice versa. We are not really all in here. We are just keeping learning each other. So the Kaizen is about the key learning all the time. <laughs> to close the session here, I will share one slide, very old house. In 1994, WHO, World Health Organization, defined the <laughs> definition of health. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not only the absence of disease or infirmity. So you, you are not sick, doesn't mean you are healthy. <laughs> so keep your health, and then try to make your team healthy make your organization healthy by making your work easy and safer. So since we are IT people, we are creating software product to make our clients work easier and safer. So why don't we start our work easier, safer first so that we can serve our clients more? So the question is, do we have Slack? Do we have ice cream today? <laughs> No. So if not, so please create a small one. If your team didn't have a Slack, give a 15 minutes. Scrum calls it daily stand up. <laughs> but everybody stop working, get together, and one hour per week, and then two hours per month. So you can start from the day after tomorrow, from Monday. Okay, thank you very much. This is the talk.